Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at the brand new Art Nouveau set from Genzai Tambi. It's the uh, Kiritaki is the is the maker. Genzai Tambi is the brand or the line of watercolors, and they have been very popular for the last few years in the card making community and also in the watercolors community. Um, but I'm actually going to be using these on some cards later, so I figured before I get them all junky looking, I'll do a review. And uh, this is how it, co it comes with like a cellophane wrapper on it. Actually, it comes with the top of the box around the back, uh, so you can see all the pretty colors. Um, this uh, is a really actually handy little um, little swatch because it tells you all the color names and numbers in the order that they are also printed on the box. So um, I think that's really handy. I would recommend cutting that out, maybe taping it to the bottom of the box or something. I don't know if you need the rest of this information. I really don't think you do, but you know, hey, save it if you want to. It's your life. Uh, all of the Ganza Tambi sets come with this little um, overlay, which kind of helps the paints from moving around. You can use it as a mixing area. Generally, these paints were designed not to need to be mixed, and that's why there's so many colors. And the pans are big because the um, like Sumi E style brushes they would use for doing paintings, like on rice paper with this type of paint, you wouldn't really mix your colors. You'd get that big brush in there, you pick up the color, you do your thing. You might load two colors up on one brush, but you're generally not mixing with this paint, so that's why there's no mixing area. Feel free to mix. I mix them, you know, I don't have any issues with that. These colors are more um, muted. They are a vintage Art Nouveau set. Um, they are all new colors, so if you have the set of 48 colors, these are different. These are all different. Uh, and in the set of 100, these are included, the original set of 48 are included, and then all their little specialty sets like the um, the pearl and the metallics and the gemstones and the golds and stuff, those are all, if you want to get them all in one go, there's a 100 set, but it is more expensive to buy that 100 set, I believe, than just buying like the 48 set, this set, and then the specialty ones. But um, it comes in a pretty wood box, so so there you go. Uh, but I really was just delighted and um, charmed by this color palette. You can see that if you take out a pan, the um, and you look on the bottom, it tells you what the number is and what the color is. So if you want to open, you want to order a pan open stock, you can. I think St. Louis Art Supplies in America sells these open stock. I believe Jackson's in the UK sells them open stock and ships worldwide. Um, I'm not sure about Blick, if they have them open stock or not, but I can look and leave a link if they do. Um, they're a shallow, shallowly filled pan. They're kind of opaque, um, similar to gouache, except if you use them to the consistency of gouache, they're going to be shiny rather than matte. And these were designed for use on rice paper and porous paper, which makes it really popular with scrapbookers and card makers because they don't feather so much on your general um, materials that you might be using. So if you're not using, you know, fancy schmancy watercolor paper, they're still going to work pretty well for you. Um, on fancy schmancy watercolor paper, if you use them thickly, they will give you a shiny spot. And then where each color goes is listed, the numbers are listed here, and then the characters in Japanese, and um, so you can put them back, and you can also refer to the the chart there if you want to. I prepared a swatch chart because I thought it might be fun to swatch these together. I know other channels have been on the, um, have got these before me and uh, already done swatching videos, but I figured, oh, what the heck, I'll do it. If you guys already saw it and don't care, then you can skip it. But if you haven't, if these are new to you, you can uh, watch me swatch them. Watch me swatch them. How about that? <laughs> um, I actually have been aware of these for probably, I don't know, when they first came out, I don't know if that was like last fall or last summer, I put them on my Christmas wish list, but they sold out. And so when they came back in stock this winter, this January, I did order them for myself. So late Christmas present from me to me. Isn't that awful? All right. So we got our, um, our set here. I'm actually going to, why did I set this up this way? I like to, I like to have my palette to my right. All right. Let's see how they rewet. I did not pre-spray these. I'm using a, um, Taclon brush, they rewet very well, you can see that. This is Saffron Yellow, number 404. I have put a line down with permanent marker. And then when this is all dry, I'll actually put a line on top because these are, I'm just adding a little water to gradient, gradient it out. Um, these are more opaque than the other versions. They have white added, they are definitely more of a um, trendy type of color scheme, I would say. More convenience colors, because yeah, you can mix these colors pretty easily, but sometimes it's fun just to have a palette of colors together. This one's called Green Gold. The addition of white and maybe even black 
pigment in there makes it a little it makes it quite a bit more muted than what you think. That actually looks kind of like your typical green gold. And one thing I was really excited about with these colors um, was that some of them have some granulation to them. And I don't know if they're like a true pigment granulation or if it's more of a excess filler granulation, but they looked pretty. And sometimes it's fun just to kind of play with colors, do like a, um, you know, do like a background and get those neat textures in there. I'm not sure about light fastness here. I wonder if that says on the pans. It might actually. Uh, if it does, I don't know. These are made in Japan, if that wasn't clear with the name Kirataki. They're not very expensive. I paid, I think it was full price and they were like $36 for the set of 24. They also have a set of 24 of their standard colors. That's, that's how I was introduced to the line many years ago, probably like 2015, 2014. So gosh, almost 10 years ago. Um, with the original set of 24, very vibrant colors, they mix great. Mine are, I, I moved mine to another tin that had a mixing area because the brighter colors were good for mixing. Uh, that was Ecru Beige, by the way, and the one before that was Flax. Um, and yeah, they're fun. I, I use them quite a bit. I find them to be quite versatile since you can use them kind of gouache or water them down and, uh, which you could do with any gouache, but these, I, I would say, if you had to put them on a scale of watercolor to gouache, I would say they're more watercolor. Although these are quite, these have quite a bit of white added to them. That one is called Pale Pink number 18. But, you know, $36 for 24 cup, large pans of paint where you can reuse the pans. I mean, and you can get open stock. I think that's a pretty good deal. And, you know, I'm sure once they've been out for a while, they'll be cheaper. I shouldn't say I'm sure, but... That's been the case with all of their other sets, like the 48 set when that first came out. I can't remember what that was. I think it was probably around $100. And when I bought it uh, last summer, or maybe it was a year ago, it was like $48. And I've seen them, seen it down to like $45. So I think um, maybe because it's more, it's more popular with crafters, uh, it sell, it, you know, it's either cheaper because more people have bought into it. It's got a larger customer base or it's kind of... Um, Craft products tend to kind of follow like a trend cycle, whereas when things are new, they're the most expensive, more popular, and then as popularity dies down, the price drops. Who can say? Okay, did I miss one? Oh, shoot. Coral pink, pale pink, cor oh no, 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 no. Oh, well, let's see how good they lift because I totally skipped over coral pink. <gasps> Oh no. Okay guys, you know what? I gotta scrub this out and uh, I, I'll be back. I'm gonna scrub those two out, lift them off and see if I can cover them up. Well, I can say they're quite staining. Uh, scrubbing did not work. So I just made my, took that same paper and made myself an extra uh, little swatch for each of these and we will, we'll do that again. Oh, we're getting off to a great start here with this review. More scattered than normal with 100% more scatification. Is that a word? Who can say? There we go. All right, so we're gonna we're gonna number seventeen. Are we, number eighteen was pale pink. Number seventeen is coral pink. Good lord, uh, that's a pretty color though. They this does seem to. I mean, looking at it dry uh, on dry paper, it does seem to have a good um, amount of amount of granulation there, but we'll see when it dries. So this is Potter's Pink, number four. 17. What have I done? Okay, oh my gosh, I'm looking at the wrong numbers. That's what it is. Okay, so 18 Pale Pink, 17 Coral Pink, 19 Potter's Pink. Oh my goodness, guys. That seems to have a really nice granulation to it. Let's hope it stays like that. I am trying to put enough water on my paintbrush that I will see the granulation if it's there. Vermilion. This is a beautiful, juicy color. The paper I'm using is Arteza Expert. Not the cotton one, but the um, but the other Expert paper they have. I feel like it's a really nice paper. I usually uh, swatch on Fabriano Studio, but... Um, I was uh, just about out of the cold press one, so I'm like, I'm going to do this one. Okay, this one is Alizarin Crimson. So these colors will have names that 
are like ones you're used to, but like this definitely looks more purple and definitely more muted. It looks almost like a dusty, um, a dusty rose color. Uh, mauve taupe number three o three. This kind of reminds me of the colors that were popular in the 80s, the Dusty Roses and the Dusty mo Mauve Mauve. Then Old Mauve. Like these look like those kind of Williamsburg uh, paint colors. Kind of like uh, Americana. Like these three colors, they look very much like a New England Americana puritanical. So does this one actually? It looks like that country blue that was really popular in the 80s, 80s to 90s. That it was probably early 90s. You know, everything was that muted kind of country palette. I think what got me confused was the fact that I've done a I've done my chart kind of like the chart on the front of the box because when I'm doing a nine by twelve piece of paper and I've got 24 colors. This is just a great way, doing um, four rows of six is a great way to be able to swatch out something really fully. Um, these are really pretty. That vermilion kind of sticks out like a sore thumb, but um, but it's pretty. I might reorganize all my colors and put them, I don't know. <laughs> I love to put things in color, rainbow color order. Uh, don't we all? That's like, I think everybody loves that, don't they? Um, now we got cobalt turquoise, number 602. I'm not sure if this is a real cobalt turquoise. We'll see if it granulates. It's really hard to tell until the paper's dry. The application is nice and smooth. I'll do a glaze on these. Um, I'll probably do that off camera. And then maybe I'll do it on camera. I don't know. And then I'll draw a marker line over it so you can see. Because sometimes it's hard to tell. Like, I guess you could see the little bits of black like between them, but it can be hard to tell. But when you see the two lines next to each other, you can see how much is showing up. One thing I'm noticing, I do see a little bit of like a veil of, of like, um, of color, like a, but it's pretty sheer. It's pretty sheer. It's not like speckly and chalky. So that's good. That flax color is really nice. That has a really pretty granulation and almost like it has like a PBK 11 in it or something. Now cobalt green. I feel like I'm just tumbling Stumbling over my words. Is that 503 uh, today? It's been a weird couple of days. We've had so many snowstorms and now it is just pouring rain. My daughter was, uh, her car was blocked in a college. Luckily she's not too far away. And um, the it's like they don't have enough spaces for the kids when they're ordered to move their cars. And if they park in the wrong parking spot, they get towed. And it's like, and a ticket, and so it's like, you know, almost $300 to get your car back if you get towed. So she was really freaking out. And uh, so she drove home last night, and I drove her back to school, and she's leaving her car here, and at least until the major storms are over. That's cobalt green. This one is billiard green. That looks like it has some granulation, but it may just be the fact that it's wet and it looks that way. So anyway, it's just been it's just been kind of weird and just, you know, worried about your kids on the road in this crazy weather. I guess it shouldn't be that crazy because it's Maine in January, but now it's pouring rain. It's, it's very unsettling. But hopefully some of that will melt around, melt away, melt some of the snow away. Shadow green, number six. Wait a minute. Billiard green shadow. I wrote shadow green, but I wrote 506 for some reason. It is, oh yeah, it is 506. I was looking at the number ahead, number on top of it. 506 shadow green. I'm going to let the colors dry naturally so we can see if it's going to give us any granulation. Of course, the wetter the wash, the more granulation you'll get. Pea green is the next color. That's pretty. That's a pretty pastel. And I'm going to scoot it up just a little bit and make sure we're on camera here. Uh, then we've got ivy green. 
number 505. Nice fresh color. You don't get blossoms as much with these um, paints, I think because of the thickness in them. They're more viscous. Green gray, number 504. Oh, that's pretty. It's almost like um it's almost like an olive. It's actually a little more saturated than I thought it would be. Next up we have beige gray. be fun to cut these apart and use them as little cards and like kind of place out different ones together but you could actually do that with the paints themselves they um they do show fairly well in the uh pans yellow brown number I just cleaned my brush in my in my clean water. Uh, the next color is Mars Yellow. Now Mars colors generally do have granulation, but I've never heard of Mars Yellow before. So we will see about that. Maybe I'll add a little extra water to it. See if I can. Uh... Oh, that's probably a little too much. Force a little extra granulation if it's going to. These actually are not as opaque as I thought they would be. Which makes me wonder why they say use it like you can use it like gouache. I think you'd use it up fast if you used it that thickly. Alright, so there's our colorway. That's pretty. It's a really pretty combination. Um, yeah. Those pastels have been so popular, so I think this is going to be a really popular set. I mean, look at some of these colors. Look at that coral pink, the pea green, the cobalt teal. I mean, those are just, those are really pretty. Um, I'm going to let this dry, and then I will paint a glaze over all of these, and then I will do a stripe of black over all of these. Um, maybe I'll do some mixing. This really isn't designed for mixing, but I might just do some just to see how it goes. Actually, we could do that on camera. Why not? Let's do um, let's do our most primary colors. I'm going to set that next to my radiator. And uh, let's see. Our most primary colors would probably be... This is kind of tricky. Definitely it would be... Let's do a warm primary and a cool primary. So let's do vermilion. Um, let's do Mars Yellow. Those are both very red leaning. Um, gosh, I think I might go for a green in this case because Maybe the, uh, because we don't really have a blue that's, that's really strong. So let's do, oh, that's, that makes a pretty, a pretty color. And I'm pretty sure that'll make a pretty much a, a, um, a mud. Or gray with the red. Let's try this yellow. And this Ozarin Crimson. Actually, it makes a pretty peach. And let's try this blue. This is our brightest blue.
a little more blue in there. That makes like one of the other colors, makes like that color kind of. Does make a pretty, a pretty green. Let's try this yellow and the vermilion red. Let's try that yellow with. Um, Hmm, one of the greens, let's see. Let's try it with this shadow green, I think it was called. Well, that's exciting, that's really pretty. Let's try that red with some crimson. Well, you know, you can get some really uh, interesting mixes there. Definitely, you know, you definitely can play with the colors a bit. You're not going to get the super saturated mixes because the colors are already multi-pigment mixes and they all seem to be somewhat opaque. So that's going to draw down on some of the luminosity and your mixing ability. But um, I'm actually going to be using these in a project. So what I think I'll do when we come back, um, I'm not sure if I'm going to come back before or after I'm done my big card making project with these, but um, I definitely will show you those in this video. So um even though the card making video might not be out yet by the time I post this. But anyway, see you in a minute. I decided to pop right in uh, after getting the glazing done, drying it, and also doing a little research online. Um, so I didn't forget any of the important things I wanted to say. So one thing I noticed right off the bat is that very little shiny spots. I thought they'd be, this, these whole glazing strips would be super shiny uh, on sized watercolor paper like this, but I'm only seeing small amounts of shine. I'm seeing some like on top of the marker area and at the very top of the swatch where I started my glaze and there was more pigment. But overall, I mean, not a lot of shine, uh, especially compared to their original, like the original 24 color set that I had. Um, some colors were quite opaque like that. Um, that old mauve seems to be, or old mauve seems to be very opaque. Um, the alizarin crimson is actually quite opaque. The mauve taupe, um, the beige gray, but the other ones are actually quite sheer. I'm surprised at how sheer they are. Um, I did a line and marker on top just so you could see like the, the fat marker line is underneath the paint. The thin marker line is on top of the paint and um, you can see that, I mean, it, they're, they're not too bad. I mean, you can definitely see the, the haze over the aqua color, but um, yeah, they're, they're more translucent than I thought, kind of uh, similar to like the Derwent pastel set, which is a very sheer pastel set, which is kind of one of my favorite pastel sets because of that reason you can still see your marker lines or your stamping lines underneath if you're trying to color something that you've rubber stamped and you want to re retain those lines. Um, the colors are granulate. Um, green, what's it called? Green, gray, beige, gray, um, yellow, brown, and Venetian brown granulate a little bit. I really didn't see much granulation in Potter's Pink, which was surprising because Potter, uh, standard Potter's Pink is very uh, granulating. Um, the flax, the flax um, beige is quite granulating, or you know, granulating. But that seems to be, those seem to be the big granulators. So if you just wanted to get some single pigments, that beige gray is really pretty. I could see that having a lot of like uses in landscapes and architecture. Just like, can you imagine painting rocks with that lovely texture? You could mix it yourself. You could take some um, like a Naples yellow and Mars black and um, maybe some buff titanium and mix that color pretty easily. You can get that texture to it. But it's kind of, kind of fun, you know, it's just fun. It's just fun to have new paint, isn't it? Oh, it is, it is. Um, and these are so pretty. They're such a pretty, um, they're such a pretty collection. So you may be like nervous about using them because they are so pretty in the box. And yes, you do get a little bit of like, um, you know, you can see almost like the fillers or extenders or whatever the white pigmentation coming up when you wet them down. But uh, I don't know, it doesn't bother me when they dry out, they're gonna be dark again. Uh, 
it that doesn't bother me. I'm not curating museum art supplies. I am someone who enjoys collecting and using their supplies. One thing I want to mention though is um, I found a review on Kimberly Crick's blog and she has probably the most extensive watercolor reviews around and um, the the Gansai Tanbi line of paints, Gansai Tanbi line of paints, have always been said to be vegan and light fast and I always, I, I never really, I knew they claimed to be light fast because I, uh, I really wouldn't trust them to be light fast without the pigment information readily available, uh, without, you know? Um, although I have my 24 set, I had a swatch hanging on the wall with my filming lights and I hadn't had any, any fading on that, so eh, seems to be, seems to be alright. That was several years ago, but they've always maintained on, on the Kiritaki website and other websites that they are vegan and light fast. Um, but then sometime in the last uh, few years, they've taken away the vegan recommendation and um, because these don't use an animal binder glue like other Gansai paints, but apparently the glycerin that they're using in the paints isn't vegetable glycerin, it's beef tallow, which is weird. I didn't even know there was animal glycerin, but um, but apparently they're using a animal-derived glycerin in their paints, and now the light fast ratings have gone down. So I don't know if those are... Um, if that's the reason why the light fast ratings have gone down, or if like during the pandemic they had to source pigments elsewhere, uh, or what it was, but I think it's probably some sort of production issues during the pandemic. They had to change the recipe to, to find more available materials and um, and it reduced the light fastness. Or it could be the beef tallow. I don't know. Or it could be um, it could be to keep the prices competitive. They've you know it's been some skimpflation or some what do they call it? Shrink? Not yeah, skimpflation where they replace ingredients to you know lower the price. I don't know. Um, these are lovely paints. There's no odor to them at all. Generally, your paints that use like an animal glue have a uh, funky smell to them. These have no odor to them. So that's kind of weird. I mean, I've never heard of it, like beef tallow being called glycerin before, but um, I trust Kimberly's review. She's extremely knowledgeable on all things watercolor, and I will link her review up so you can check that out yourself and uh, make your decisions. But um, yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't have thought these would be light fast anyway, but you know, <clears throat> now that they said that they were light fast in the past or their other colors and now they've taken now there's um Kimberly swatched some of her old colors versus new colors and noticed some faded that didn't fade before. So that's uh that's concerning if you want to display your artwork. Um but I'm gonna be using these in a bunch of Galentine's cards, so I'm not worried about that. I bought them for the pretty colors and to play with them and have a good time. So um I'm gonna go do that and when I'm done those cards, I will come back on this video, show you those. Um, but then of course you can go find that video or wait for that video if you're curious on how we made the cards. But I think it's a beautiful color selection and I just want to make sure you have all the information that you need if you're considering purchasing these. But they're pretty. They're pretty. Oh, on the Kiritaki website, I did want to mention they list out all of the colors um, that they offer, all 100 colors, including these and the 48 set. They put them in order. So there are... Um, 48 plus 24, what's that, 72 uh, colors in the, between those two sets, plus one white that's made from oyster shells. Uh, so that wouldn't be vegan. So I thought maybe they take, they could have taken their vegan um, listing away because if it's made from oyster shells, it wouldn't be vegan, like that other white they did, uh, which I don't have. But um, it's available open stock. Uh, so they have those colors all listed in color order, and they denote which ones are the new colors. If you're curious, it's kind of interesting to see them all put out in order like that. And then they show you the specialty sets that are, if you buy the set of 100, the other specialty sets you can get. But you can get them without buying that expensive set of 100, which is much more per pan than just buying them in the smaller sets. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna go make some cards, and uh, I'll come back once I have done that. But yeah, I I really like those granulating ones. I think they're really pretty, and they'd be lovely in landscapes. I might, and it, you know, the nice thing is these are really easy to pop out. Use a little poster pa poster putty and stick it into your other palette while you're doing some landscapes, and then pop it back in here to store it. I like that. I love the size of these pans. Um, so anyway, uh, I'm gonna go make some cards. I am back with the final wrap-up of our review of the Gensai Tampe paints. First, the Art Nouveau set. First, let's take a look at the paints themselves. This is after two paintings and ten cards. Um, you can see how the you know pigment kind of separates a little bit. You can see a little bit of white um, spots on them or lighter spots. That's from the uh, probably pigment white four. I would assume there's no pigment information, but I assume it's like precipitated chalk that they use to opacify these and get these more muted um, pastel tones. Not a problem. It's just they're not going to look brand new after you use them, which I mean, 
I'm not curating a supply, a museum of uh, art supplies. I don't know about you, but it doesn't bother me. But just to kind of show you what they're going to look like in case you're like, oh, I don't like that. You might not want to buy them because that's just how they're going to look after you use them. But um, they performed really well. I didn't pre-wet them to paint with them and they re-wet perfectly. They were fine. I find the colors in used to be much brighter than they were on the swatch on the inside of the box. So I'd highly recommend doing a swatch on your own watercolor paper. When I did show the swatch after we did it, the thin line is on top of the paint. The thick line is underneath the paint. Um, the paints are pretty opaque in Masto, not as opaque as gouache, but not as shiny as your brighter color Ganzai colors. Um, they're really pretty. I don't recommend mixing them too much. I do have a little dish here that I used when I wanted to mix it color just to, um, you know, because maybe I wanted like, in one of these paintings, I need to get close to a black. So I use that green and that red uh, to get a close to black color. But other than that, I would recommend kind of just like picking up some color on your brush or one of those big pans and slap it and down. And that's what I did here. I started with a pencil sketch and then I just grabbed color, slapped it down, grabbed another color, slapped it down, let them kind of merge on the paint, on the paper. But I didn't really mix too much off the paper because I wanted to get that. Um, I, I wanted to keep the colors as saturated as they would be because they're already muted. If you mix too much with these, you're going to get mud. And so for that reason, it wouldn't be the, the best option for somebody's first watercolor paint set. Um, they're a little too finicky for that, but they are gorgeous if, you, if you're if um, you somebody that just likes to play with color, somebody who's a little bit more experienced with watercolor and mixing and um, can avoid the mud. Or uh, yeah, if you just kind of want that in-color type theme for some crafts. So I'll show you the cards that I made. Um, and I pretty much just used the colors as they came, maybe two colors in an area. But for the most part, I was just putting paint. I put paint on the background, which was Mod Podge. So it was a more of a slick surface. It stuck fine. Uh, it did great on the hot press watercolor paper, but it did like kind of, um, you know, it gives you that watercolor look. It's not like fine technique here. I was just kind of coloring with those. I did mix a bit for skin tones. But it is kind of difficult to mix these because they are going to want to go to mud. So these are crafting applications. Works good for working on um, on a variety of different papers because of the thickness of the paint. It doesn't feather on unsized paper. This is a cellulose sketchbook, Hanamule watercolor book. Um, Again, I just put the colors down and let them kind of merge on the paper. I did some spattering. The techniques were great. When they, you let them mix on the paper, you get some really beautiful effects. And uh, that's how I recommend using these. On this painting here, I did the background with this blue. And then I added in some purple and some crimson or some old mauve and alizarin crimson uh, clouds. I used the shadow gray to do some misty trees. I used the Ecru to do the face, and then I mixed in some of the Mars Yellow and Mars Brown to get some of the shading. Um, I added some vermilion and coral into the cheeks and the lips. Uh, then I did go in with a little bit of colored pencil at the end. I've used some of the greens and blues here as well. Um, beautiful paints. I really like them. They're definitely not the paint for every, every application. They are definitely more of a specialty type paint, but um, I think they're a lot of fun and they're pretty inexpensive to get like 24 large pans of color, although they are very shallow pans. I can show you one. Um, I think, it, gosh, I'm thinking they're around $34 and they'll probably be less once they, you know, once the, all the um, excitement goes down and they can keep them in stock. But for right now, they're about 36 bucks, which is not bad. I believe you, yeah, you can get these open stock. Um, I think St. Louis Art Supply might sell them open stock. They're not going to be as cheap as they are in sets. And there is a set of 100 colors, which um, at the time I'm taping this, it probably won't be the case when this goes up, but it was on sale for um, down from 230 to 167 on Amazon. But uh, yeah, the 100 set is brand new. It's all the colors. It's exciting. So that's going to be high for a while. But um, but this set is fun. The set is fun. If you have this set, the set of 48, and their specialty metallic and graphite colors, you'll have all the colors they make except for one, which is like a little, um, like a, a white uh, made from oyster shells. So yeah, it's, um, it's fun. You can collect the sets in a lot of different ways. And yeah, I think they're fun. I like this color collection. It kind of was a nice little spark to get me uh, working a little creatively today when I was feeling kind of meh. And it's just fun to see colors put together in a new way. 
Uh, these are all mixes, I would say. Uh, none of them, I would say, is a pure pigment. So just know what you're getting. And, um, you know, I will take a photo of this and put it on my blog so you can look at the swatches and see if maybe you want to, maybe instead you just want to pick out a couple colors that, that are different from what you have to play with. I don't know. Um, I think they're a great value. I think they're a good product. And I've really enjoyed working with them. So I want to thank you so much for watching this review. I hope you found it useful. And if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And until next time, happy crafting.